So this is so typical me and my math skills. Um, I booked with Shiley for seven o'clock Israel time. What did I tell her? Some emails I said 11 o'clock Chicago time and some of them I said 12. Um, fully aware of the fact that she's on central time, not eastern time. And I've t <laughs> totally managed to mess this up. Uh, poor girl is now scrambling to get on live an hour early than um, she is actually planning to, um, which is very kind. So while we wait for Sh while we wait for Shiley to join, let's see who we have. Um, send me a message in the chat. I sound like a YouTuber, and let me know who you are and who's watching. And here comes Shiley. Let's. Sh Shiley is in the green room. Love that. I'm gonna add you in. I'm so sorry. I was just apologising for my terrible math. I know you're Central, and not Eastern. I know. No. I, know. <laughs> I, just, I suck. That math. It happens. I just, and I, cause I was reading back over the emails and sometimes I said 11 and sometimes I said 12. <laughs> yeah. You know, the hack is a calendar invite. That's the best hack. That yes. way it'll automatically then, update. And then I made a calendar appointment because you said semi, semi calendar invite. And then I forgot to add you and actually invite you to it. So I have it, which is really nice. But you know, <laughs> so all in all, that was it really happens. smooth. I, if it makes you feel better, I'll tell you this. When I was working my first like social media job a million years ago, like 10 years ago, uh, I had an interview scheduled with someone in like Israel, somewhere in Israel. And we, the timing worked out. Like we had the right, we were eating lunch and we knew that the interview was in an hour. And then the guy was messaging us like, where are you? And so from that day, I've been traumatized about time zones because that interview actually never ended up happening, even though I had prepared for hours and hours for it. <laughs> it happens. So like, we've all done it. I could literally say that I've done the same thing. So time's on math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And mo I'm used to kind of like either England or New York, basically. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, and also somehow my name didn't pop up. I think everyone knows who you are, who I am, but they don't know you. So here you go. Introduce yourself. I like that. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm here. Uh, I'm amazing and wonderful. No, I'm just, I'm having an no but this is fun thank you for having me on your show or your show your your live your your whole thing i love <laughs> I'd it i'd love to call it so <laughs> one day one day i will have a show this is live in my group which is called get exposure which you've now joined um we have close to 300 members it's been going just over a year Ooh. um and the idea is like it says is you know helping people like be more bold which is a lot of what you do as well like helping people figure mm -hmm. out how they want to put themselves out there and we connected through yes. a mutual friend, Abby. How, I don't know how Love you her. connected with her, but Abby. Oh. <laughs> um, She's a, a client of a client. Things. Right. She's a client of a client, but then my client hired her too. So they worked together a lot. And then Abby pulled me into her community. And every few weeks or every few months, I'll get a message from someone who watched the replay of that interview I did like two years ago. Brilliant. I um, love that it Abby and I have also enjoyed sushi together at the mall. So that was really fun. So I'm one of the I'm few jealous. people in her network that's met her. But you've also met her in person because you've taken her photos. So I met, she doesn't I'm know jealous, that many people IRL. But she saw you. Yeah. I went out to Wait. sushi with Abby. Yeah, it's great. I love it. So I know it's pretty rare because she serves a lot of people all over the world. So <laughs> the fact that we, we both met her in person is really nice. Yes. So, and maybe so, one day I'll meet you soon. <laughs> exactly. Sushi. Um, uh, meanwhile, explain what you what your superpowers are. Uh, so, especially thinking about your community, about people who are figuring out how to show up and showcase themselves on the internet. Uh, first off, there's a confidence barrier that sometimes people have when it comes to doing stuff on the internet. They're thinking, oh my gosh, this Instagram thing is super hard. They should call you if it's an Instagram problem because I know you're good at that. <laughs> but uh, they're like, oh, this thing is hard or LinkedIn is confusing or like, why does nobody like my stuff? And so people <laughs> feel like they're not capable with their internet capabilities. <laughs> are we, oh. Uh, so I help them take what they already know. A lot of them already have a business, right? They take what already works in their business and translate to the efforts they do on the internet. So the greatest example of this is I ask my prospects, I'm like, how are you currently staying in touch with the people in your network if they're getting their business by word of mouth? And they're like, well, I'm not really staying in touch with the people that matter for my business. And I'm like, huh, 
maybe that's a problem because if these are the people that are going to bring your next customer, you got to start with them first, right? I think a lot of people will say, oh, you know, hopefully somebody's going to fall from the sky and just like pay me money to do this thing, which maybe occasionally, like I've got a few customers from Google, which is totally random, but, uh, but you got to feed the people that you've got first, because if they're happy with you and they're engaged and excited, then they're going to tell their friends that they're, who are just like them, that they're, they know you and that you're doing great things. So I always start with the people you already know are great for you or the people who are in maybe your target demo. So that way you are putting your efforts into something, whether it's five people, a hundred people that follow you. If those hundred people really love and adore you, yeah. they're going to see your stuff. They're going to remember you as the expert of the thing that you do, no matter what your field is. That's the starting point for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I do. I can't be unforgettable in a hundred days. Your social media Sherpa.com. <laughs> How, how did you become the social media Sherpa? So I, I give this story, like there's a rule. I don't know if you know about the drag world, but like you get a drag mom and the drag person is supposed to give you your, your name of your drag queen name. So I feel like oh, the yeah. same thing happened to me. So my like mentor who was on the radio for like 30 years here in Chicago, uh, she was like, and I've hired her too. She's a great speaker coach, Catherine Johns, amazing lady. She's like, Shiley, I hate your business name because I went by a different name. She's like, I don't think this is good. I don't think this fits the demo that you're trying to serve. You know what I've been thinking about for you? And I was like, for the last three months, Months. I was like, you've been thinking about me for three months of what you want to name my business? She's like, I like the word Sherpa. And I was like, Sherpa. So I sat with it for like a day and I kept seeing like Sherpa mattresses, Sherpa scooters, Sherpa blah, blah, oh blah, God. everything like Sherpa accounting. I was like, all oh, this time. So I bought the domain. And I just changed it on LinkedIn just to see what would happen because you could literally, and this is good for everybody here. You can change your name or your business brand like immediately using social media. So I changed it just to see what would happen. And then people were like, oh, this is kind of nice. Oh, I like this. This is good. And then everybody was way more interested in my company. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll just keep it. Didn't cost me a lot to just buy the domain and change it on LinkedIn. In. And then eventually I got right. a logo like a year or two later. Um, I am, you are very good at design. I am design challenged. So I just want to highlight that about you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but uh, that's how I got the business name and I've kept it ever since. Amazing. Um, so I have to say, um, I just had a look at the comments. Some people are having issues with us like breaking up. Um, yeah. I have, I have paid. I don't know what this is in dollars, but close to 13,000 shekels to have my internet fixed. So I ate, I, there is nothing you else look great. I can do. Nothing, nothing. It's, so, I wonder if it's so me, because I show up really good on my little screen, but I'm showing up really choppy on your your little presenter screen. Ah, so I don't know what's going okay. on. Okay, so we can just play uh, it. It's cool, fine. I don't know, blame me for it. It's fine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, but anyway, I mean, I'm hoping on the replay it'll come out a little bit clearer. Apologies in advance if, you're, if, if it's kind of cutting in and out. But um, let's talk about niche. I'm happy that you're calling it niching and not niching, first of all. It is what it is. I don't know. I raised by immigrants. I don't know which is right. I just listen to people. So it's niche. <laughs> it's niche. Great. It's niche. We're good. Great. We're good. Raised by immigrants. You're funny. Um, so. <laughs> We chose this title, What to Do When You Aren't Ready to Niche. Um, so, yeah, where shall we begin? Where so we begin? here's what I'll tell you, right? I think, look, even for me, like when I think of like the range of crazy business owners I've had from like Indian matchmaker to rabbi turned sleep consultant to burlesque dancers to photographers. I've had, I have had two photographers or three photographers. I've had a bunch of photographers. I to like real estate, it's all crazy range of people, right? It's not very clear that I have a niche. Uh, and that's hard because they say, what do they do? The riches and the niches. I use the word niche, but whatever. They say the riches is the niches. Like it's real. Oops. Sorry. My mom's calling. Look at, I'm a nice Jewish girl. I pick up the phone. No, I'm going to ignore her. <laughs> but, uh, they say, uh, they say, right. They say the riches and the niches, which is, you know what? I'm not going to lie. It's somewhat true. It's pretty true. If people understand exactly who you serve, it's a lot easier for them to say, you know, Oh, this is the photographer you need for branding. Right. Uh, so, but it's hard because to get to that point where you're like naming it is hard. Yeah. And I'm sure your people who are listening to this are like, I don't know who I'm serving. And like, you know what? The more I did what I did in my business and the more people came up to me being like, yes, I want something. The more my business took shape and the clearer I got at understanding exactly what it is that I saw. Yeah. 
And that's the part that I think is the easiest hack for someone who's lost and confused is to, to really keep getting to know what you do better. Because when you can name that out loud, it's almost like you're niching, but you're niching not as like an industry niche, but as a uh, more of a what you solve niche or like the clear you get at what you solve that also makes it easier for people to have that light bulb. But that's a way easier next step than like picking like accountants or like lawyers or like therapy practice owners, which I've also had, I've had therapy practice owners, right? So the mm. clearer you get at what you solve, the easier people can say yes. And in my business, I happen to be a volume of attention business. So like a lot of people see me, a lot of people know what I've got going on. I don't, but I don't want every single client. So when people come to me, they think, oh, Shiley has something for me. And they're always a big mix of people, but they're signaled by what I do. Now, not every person listening to this is got has a marketing channel like that but uh the clearer you get at what you solve and what you rock at the better people will know who you are and what you can do for them right (laughs) (laughs) yeah your people where are they (laughs) so many thoughts i think i was having a discussion this morning about how um i worked with a branding coach last year and she was the one that said to me um i think my tagline at the time on instagram said like that i was like uh photographer for introverted introverted um business owners and she said i'm looking at your website i know some of these people they're not introverts they 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 have issues around being visible and showing up it's not to do with being introvert or extrovert it's to do with visibility you are all about visibility i swear like i worked with her for six months just that one sentence i'm like boom that's amazing. Ooh. So I had like desperately like looked for this neat, like my niche is introverts and it wasn't because I was trying to force it instead of letting it come to me, instead of just carrying on with the experience and the working with people. Right. Um, and I think that's the thing. I think you can't, you can't force it. Um, I love that. Yeah. You, you let it come to you in a lot of ways, right? Like you better just, des- but I think what is happening with you is that you better describe what you did and for, for what the result was, right? Is that, yeah. is that what I'm hearing? Well, what you mean now? Or what the transformation was for you with this person that helped you? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that it, it really was one of those like, ping light bulb moments that I thought that only existed in movies I was like damn this is where it all ties in this is where it all ties in together photography and the coaching that I was doing at the time like that I just started talking about um and then she said it's not just Instagram coaching and it's not just for introverts it's just visibility coaching for people who are afraid of showing themselves online they might they might be just very private or like feel like social media is oversharing or feel like showing up and talking about your wins is bragging and da, da, da. like there's a lot of like misunderstandings mm-hmm. and misconceptions and that's your yep. job that's yep. that's your thing uh, I, I think have a thing. you're 100% right it's let's let's de- delve into that right because one of the things that I think I hear this too and I'm sure your community has this I'm too nervous to share or this is too much or this is bragging or I'm underconfident or whatever but the other thing is is that what the internet is and I think this is where we're going to take away some of the stigma of social media is that it's about letting people see you right like I've never you know I never had sushi with you yet like right I've never seen you in person yes. but the more I see your content I've seen your YouTube videos I've seen your LinkedIn content uh I've seen your, your audit offer like I've seen it all like I've seen a lot of your content right Ooh. I've gotten to know you better and we've not had a phone call before right and that's what right. your people are doing they're just getting to know you better right so you just shared something that you teach your people like this is a great example you're literally just saying hey if you're lost and stuck and you don't know how to like ex- ex- I don't know, you're awesome this is one of my lines but like that's related to what you do if you don't have like if you're nervous about that like here let me explain to you what I've done for other people and that's just information that's not bragging that's just providing context for who you are what you do and what you solve and that's the simplest way to to do to do work one of the first things I tell people I have a I don't know. It's like a public video course thing. It's on YouTube, but it's also as a course. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But the first thing I tell people to do, if you're, especially if you're nervous about starting on social media is brain dump everything that your ideal client wonders about, like, you know, problems to like, what they, what does your business really do? Who do you really serve? Or like things people miss 
uh, where they don't hire whatever your service is. Like all the tips, tricks, your origin story, just brain dump it because that's just information that they're not going to get unless they talk to you on the phone. And I don't want to send the phone for 10 hours explaining it to people. And you let your website, your content, your Instagram posts, your photography speak for you before you ever get on the phone with someone. And that takes people from like, I kind of know them and I kind of trust them to like, oh, you know, you are the exact person I need for whatever service per like you do. That's the magic of all of it is you're letting them get to know you without having to get on the phone to explain yourself. That's the magic yeah. of the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it works. You know, I think when it also, works. <laughs> also like, <laughs> that's funny. you know, I've been in so many workshops and things where they would talk about ideal client avatars and I would just roll my yeah. eyes because I'd be saying, what color shoes does she wear and what flavor chewing gum does she chew? And, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and I'm like, that's not what it's about literally like no. I I will write pieces of content I will think about people that I have worked either worked with or that I really yes. want to work with a specific person right now I'm writing to you and I think of all the things I know about them either from online or actually from real life and I write to them and it's happened twice where someone's written back to me and it's been the person that I was thinking of and they're like, I feel like you're writing to me. And I'm thinking, ah, I was, <laughs> you, know, uh... you know, it's just, it's magic. Just like, that's how you like figure out. And that, that's all like the part of the whole niching process is like, really, who is going to bring me joy? Who's going to be a pain in the butt to work with? And who are the people that I really want to work with? Oh, Shiley has frozen officially. Am I frozen? Oh, yes, hello, you were. You were. Am I back? Now, I'm frozen yeah. on my screen, but you can mm, hear me. You're, I can hear you. Oh, now oh, you move. Okay, here we go. You move. So my, I'm going to quote my friend, Joe Martin, who is like a, he's also a marketer, but he does. I think there's a point here, right? Like when you say, oh, make a client avatar, that's not bad marketing advice. It's bad marketing advice for people who are starting out. I think when you get yeah. people who are like corporate marketers, who are like thinking, oh, I worked for Coca-Cola. Like, I'm so important. Like, you don't understand a shh. You don't say anything no. else for anything about <laughs> what it's like to be a small business owner. And I no. think that's where I come in, right? I never did that extra hubbub, right? So my friend Joe Martin said something that's very similar to what you just described. He's like, you know, every great love song ever written was not written for the whole world. It was written for one person. One person. Yet every single one of us can connect to that that love song because it was so I specific. Love that. And so I've been it's trying to do what you just true. described. But I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but it's a good idea. It's much yeah. simpler than playing Avatar. So Yeah. Like don't you know I'd had a con <laughs> I'd I'd had a conversation with someone and she talked about reasons why she was hesitant to do stories or make reels, all that kind of stuff. Hoping you can still hear me, frozen person. Um, Maybe and... I'll refresh. Keep talking. I'm going to refresh. Keep going. Your okay, audience you loves you. In. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I took that conversation that I'd had with this person, like this back and forth that we'd had about why I didn't want to like show up on reels. And hold on, let me put you um, over here. Okay, you're back. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Okay, for now. Okay, for now. Um, yeah, I think it's just like like pay, paying more attention and taking away that pressure. Like you say, when you're just starting out, it can be so overwhelming. I remember downloading, I talked about this, mm -hmm. I, I ranted about this for quite a while. I downloaded this massive PDF file, which I printed off so that I, I can't read things on the screen, I have to print them. And, and it was like okay. how to... You know when you had to get your 10,000 followers on Instagram so you could get the swipe up thing, which doesn't even exist anymore. It's like it's how changing. to get to your first 10,000. And uh. the examples they gave were like Richard Branson, uh, Nike, um, like just massive, massive names. And it was things like share behind the scenes, be vulnerable, be genuine, um, like other people. It was just so generic and unhelpful. And, and then you'd kind of think, well, what's yep. wrong with me? Why is this not working? Because you're not Richard Branson, and no. you don't have Nike, and, and like, like, let's just like slow, slow this down, and like, you're gonna, mm -hmm. that, you're gonna just like run yourself into the ground if you expect to be exactly. on the same level as as corporate. I also have never really worked in the corporate world, so no. I think that's why it, it it makes it feel icky even more for me. It's irrelevant. <sighs> It's yeah. irrelevant to the people that are probably watching this. It's not where they need to be, right? And I hate that there's a big company, all the company names. And it's like, they don't get it. 
Like I does like you know people say oh clout is great, but like that clout doesn't help you because your your the knowledge of somebody at a corporation has about marketing is very very different than everyday person. So that's why I try to like not. I think when you get too sucked into the like. Um, oh, you know, get the 10,000 likes to get the thingy or like, oh, you know, you got to make reels in this particular way. If you get too sucked up into that, you're actually going to miss the thing that's actually really, really awesome, uh, which is really just, and I think maybe this is part of what your strategy is too, is focusing on the humanness of it all, right? Is that like, you have great information about what you do. And ideally, you know, some people who might want to buy it. If you do 20 people, 30 people, and you personally invite them to like your page, there's a higher chance that Instagram or whatever platform you're on is going to put your content in front of them, right? And that's how they get to know you over time. That is how everything in humanity, I feel like back to biblical days, that's probably how people did business. It's like, oh, you got the best apples. I got the best oranges. Let's trade. Like, right. great. Like, I trust you. You trust me. Like, that's yeah. how life works. So when you get rid of all the algorithm stuff, that is the same thing you can use for social media today or social media for 50 years from now maybe it won't even exist you can do it with postcards right like this applies go back to right? <laughs> you can do postcards if your postcards teach your ideal client about the thing that you do that's that's information right i had a client one of my first one of my first few clients is like four years ago he was a real uh commercial real estate guy and he's like well the people that i really want to work with i want to manage properties for like like the people who own shopping centers and he's like it's always like 50 something year old uh old dudes that own these shopping centers and I was like oh I know a guy like that in my family who's like an old dude with a shopping center I'm like okay and he's like well I'm just gonna send him a postcard to be like hey look I exist like that was the energy it was like a salesy like I'm here I want to manage your property I'm like fine and I was like well I know you're trying to learn the social media stuff but like take all the content we've developed for your social media stuff and write that on a postcard here's 10 things that people in your shoes struggle with when they run a commercial property or 10 mistakes States when they're trying to hire a person to manage their property, whatever that thing is that your business does, he could have sent that in a postcard, right? These guys might not be going on Instagram or whatever, Facebook, LinkedIn. But if you give them that info and say, hey, I have three more tips, go to my website. Like mm. they're going to trust that guy because that guy's at least trying to educate you. They're going to become the expert in your world that knows the thing that you know. And so when I say my work that I do with clients doesn't is not platform dependent, it's not because it's human relationship skills apply to whatever platform makes sense. People over you can your people, right? So for a lot so a lot of my clients, LinkedIn, hotspot. Uh not for everybody, right? My dad, and I have not taught him anything, but he's his he's an influencer on WhatsApp, which is people don't think about it on social media. But if you know people who come from immigrant backgrounds, we live for WhatsApp. Uh, so <laughs> it's possible, right? You gotta go where your people are. Some people do it over text message, right? So you've got to figure out where your strengths are. If you like talking, like I love doing podcasts and interviews. Great. So most of my content is going to be a lot of me talking to camera. So you've got to find what works for you or else you're never going to keep doing it, right? Don't just do the thing that's hot and trendy because you'll never, you'll never keep up unless it's your favorite thing to do. So. And how do we relate that back to like, how do we relate that back to not being ready to niche yet? Just like do do the things that bring you joy. Kind of, but it's in form. It's, it's inform people inform. put the right people somewhere you can inform them like that's it it's just literally give them context because if i'm someone who's dying to learn about uh like i'm clueless on photography right but i look to you as like an expert in my network who tells me about photography things right so you're my teacher in terms of photography and whatever your your people who are in your facebook group who they the act that thing teach me about it right because somebody out there is your ideal client who's lost and confused uh i'm a lost puppy explain it to me right so that you become my expert and that's how people get hired literally um, answer the questions that people are going to anticipate wanting to ask someone who's in your position. Just literally that's your con. What would they, what are their challenges? What are things they don't understand? Right. Tell me more. So then I trust you. Yeah. Um, I, I had this, this project once to write out 10 frequently asked questions and then Love it. 10, do it. 10 should ask questions as in here are the 10 questions yeah. I wish people would ask me which is very interesting because the questions that people ask versus what I wish they would ask are so different. So different. Cause it's usually like That's how, much, how much does it cost? <laughs> which obviously you is could, important, like, you know? You could, one of the things that I love on my website, I got it from this book called They Ask We Answer. Awesome book. It's probably going to be- Wait, say that again more. slowly. What's the book? They Ask You Answer. Okay. Marcus Sheridan, it might be a little too much for some of your audience, but like the first half of the book will give you some deep context of literally answering questions for your demo. 
again, might be too high level, but the gist of it is, right, ask the questions that your, or answer the questions that your people are probably wondering about. So you said something about pricing, right? I don't Mm. like putting my pricing on my website because sometimes I want to customize things, right? Like I don't want to be restricted by a package or a price, but um, what I end up doing based on this book was explaining how pricing worked in my industry, right? Like, you know, for me, it's like, okay, well, what is the typical rate that you'd expect for a social media freelancer or a virtual assistant or a social media agency, a social media coach or consultant or a speaking engagement? And I explained the drawbacks and the pros and cons so that people knew what their right thing was. So I sent it to a lead the other day and it was super clear to me that they didn't need, I was not the right service provider. They needed to pay an agency to do the work, but that blog helped them get really, really clear before we ever got on the phone. And then they appreciated that I educated them on that, right? So I didn't actually reveal my pricing. I gave them some ideas, some range and what would make the price go up or go down. And that gave them a lot of context. It takes away the choice because when I eventually propose something that's customized for them, it'll be a lot easier to pull in what their needs are. Uh, (laughs) I see a question coming in too. (laughs) Yeah, so so Hila was just saying she likes this idea of how do you serve other people and what do you help them Mm -hmm. with? I serve a wide range of clients and a wide range of fields. Yeah, like I think you don't, like when you're doing something like translation, if you say I'm only going to translate poetic literature I'm only going to translate dry legal documents you're turning away other possibilities for no good reason whereas whereas for me like when I with with photography I think it I think it really depends the field that you're in you know with photography it was distracting like taking I had people ringing me to say do you do passport photos or like, will you come and do this Brit Miller? Or will you come and do it? And it was like <laughs> here, there and everywhere. And I didn't have a focus. Whereas with translation, with translation work, I feel like it, it like she gets to have a, a chance to get a bit creative. So like, what's the point? I'm saying, what's the point in turning away yeah. the work? Mm. Is it going to detract from people? I understand that Hila translate, does translation. You know, like, I can refer people mm. to her. So I don't I know thought. like how far down you need to like do you have to only be a translator for for, for lawyers. So this is this else. is interesting. Mm. This is I'm going to mention something called the halo effect. I don't remember who taught it to me, but essentially the idea. Oh, we're going to go. This is all to her question, right? We, if mm. you want to keep it up and keep it up, whatever you want. Oh. Uh, it's I I can put it back. It's basically the idea that if you do something really, really well for a very, very specific demographic, people will assume that they can hire you for the other things, right? Like the Brit Mila or the, you know, passport for whatever, right? If you're super because like maybe the legal world probably maybe pays more. I don't know. I'm making this up, Hila. I, Hila, I don't know. But uh if the legal if like that's the world, say, hey, like I make I maybe they're well, I don't know what their issues are, but let's I'm gonna pretend I'm a lawyer for a second. Like I don't have time, right? Billable hours, like I'm panicked, yeah. I need something done quickly. Maybe you're the person that takes away all the BS for the lawyers and gets the thing done really, really quickly. Maybe your specialty is that you do it really, really fast, or that you have a very quick onboarding form that doesn't take a lot of time for the lawyers, or that you know it's super great because somebody who isn't a lawyer might still need you for something else, but just because you say you're a lawyer people the halo is that they assume that you're also good at other things too so it's sort of interesting because I don't I don't like if someone says to me I write email sequences I will not approach them for anything else because they don't know email sequences you know (sighs) but then if that's never think of referring someone to them for other writing it's I like this is complicated. I like that this is a good back and forth because it's hard. You're right. This is messy. Yeah. This is why it's so messy. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Now. It's definitely messy. It's definitely not clear cut. <laughs> like, and I think it really depends on the person. Like maybe Hilla yeah. isn't in a position where she can start turning away like the the marketing statements or like turning away the poets. You know, she might need them. Like, and you know, it's like someone once said, "Keep your day job and work on your." <sighs> On the on the on the side hustle that you eventually want it to become your main thing, sure. but you need the money to be coming in. You can't live on air. That's also the issue with that that worries people about niching is I'm gonna have to turn. And I did it gradually. I very very gradually phased out the family photography. So now it's got to the point where there are very few people that ask me for family photo sessions anymore. Because there you go. Can. So you eventually got there. I eventually got there. I'm saying it's not like something that you can just say, okay, we're done with that. Like you have to build Here's up the other if thing. you want to build up. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Here's the other factor that's messy is that, and this is what my issue was, right? I did a lot. I, 
if you look at me up on the internet, there's other things that I've done for money over the years, right? And if I let that whole brand be first and foremost on everything, that probably would have made me look a little more hot mess in terms of like, oh, what does Shiley really do? Is she a social media Sherpa or is she doing all these other jobs? Like how good could she be? Uh, the same too, people assume I'm social media management and I don't do social media management, which is super interesting. Um, like they assume I can do more, right? They're like, yeah. oh, if Shiley's the Sherpa. She could probably be a great social media manager. I'm like you don't want me as a social media manager. I want to help your social media manager be amazing. So I'm thinking about that. Like if, if I'm too broad, just because like, I think there's a, maybe like sometimes being specific gives you right. If you're, you're really good at one thing, people, they will assume you're good at, you're good at other things, but like people are scared to be too specific because they're like, Oh, I'm going to close things off. But really there's a marketing value to being really specific. But I, I get that like that might not be where everyone is, but it doesn't mean that her like value statement, um, doesn't have, it can include, Hey, I especially help lawyers who are too busy, get their documents together and I, I like that. I especially creative. like particularly like I particularly because enjoy blah blah blah. Yeah. yeah, there's more. I mean, if we're talking about like if people want profit here, like I imagine the lawyer's going to pay more, but I don't know how easy it is to mm. get those lawyer clients, right? Like the poet, I don't know where the budget. Yeah. I'm just going to make an assumption. Yeah, right? yeah, I hate yeah. that the creative industry. Yeah. Money no, it's true. Hard, of course. But you can. Also, someone the, said to, the someone lawyers, said to me the like artist. with the when you create your state your your LinkedIn caption or your Instagram whatever it is just for now it's not forever you can always change it exactly right I did with it's mine. not set in stone oh my god how many times have I changed mine I do it like every few months like somebody will give me an idea right and I'll test it I'm like do I like this word like unearth was the word that a lead gave me. And I was like, Ooh, unearth mm. your awesomeness. I was like, Ooh, like that. I don't know if I kept it. I'm not <laughs> sure if it's still on there. Like I wrote expose your awesomeness. And then she's like, well, expose makes me feel a little awkward. And I'm like, but <laughs> so then I went to Twitter and I'm like, expose your awesomeness to yourself in the world. And then I was like, do I like that? I'm like, Oh, but is that what I do? Cause I was thinking like, what is it that I actually do with my clients? And I'm literally just yeah. a brainstorm machine. I help them right. see, the, see a bigger part of their ability. There's a link that run. Um, there's a Jewish organization in Chicago that helps women who are abused get safety. And I just give her ideas because she's a wonderful lady and I want her and her organization to be successful. And so I just gave her, gave her lots of tips and ideas. And she was like, wow, I never would have thought about it like that. Or, oh, I didn't even think this was a possibility. And she was like, wow. And so I'm like, this is great. Like, I love opening up people's eyes to what they didn't know and how they can do what they want to do and how they can do it in a way that feels authentic to them. So, oh my God, you this never, is like, you never we, know. we do the same thing, basically. <laughs> I love it. Just I love it. But I love titles. that you have design skills and branding and you love Instagram. I am like, Insta I mean, look, if I needed to teach someone Instagram, I could do it. But like, you have some amazing superpowers and I'm very impressed. I need, I have many photographers who have insulted my photos and I get it and I'm working on it. So I look to you as also my hero on this stuff. So <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I'm on it. That's the perfect way to end. Because sadly, well, not sadly, but my son's youth group decided to schedule another meeting for today and it finished three minutes ago. So I actually do have to go and pick him up because he's currently standing on the street in the dark. So, you know, maybe I'll go fetch him Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of love for the baby. Oh my goodness. Um, Thank you well, so much. I'm good. so sorry about my math skills. Please forgive me. It's, it happens. Thank I've you. done it before. You've done it now. We have learned uh Always. can i share where i can connect with folks uh on the yes, web yes 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 so um, i don't know so, if you can share it on the screen but just say it and then write it I'm afterwards on linkedin i'm on linkedin look up uh either your social media sherpa you'll get my business page and you can find a link to my regular page that's where i post all the good stuff your social media sherpa.com you can get access to this like course it's like free on youtube on my youtube channel it is Basically how you can figure out where your next client is coming from. It's everything I teach my clients in 25 minutes. So you kind of get a good idea of what I do with my people. And if you're my person, we can work together. And if you're not my person, it's okay. You're going to have your mind blown anyway. And I want you to be successful. So connect <laughs> on LinkedIn, your social media, Sherpa.com. Get on my mailing list. Get on that course, the little course training video series. And just, oh, it's cute. Uh, I just stopped, I kind of half started it. Started the first video, I think. Oh, you did? Oh, good. I love it. Uh, and then I'm going to leave you on my favorite social media quote that I did not write, but I wish I did. That oh, social hey, media guys. is about the people, not about your business. Provide for the people and the people will provide for you. Nice. Like it. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I owe you sushi next time you come. I love it. Well, more adventures to come. <laughs> Maybe uh, IRL too. We'll see. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>